Hi, welcome to our uh, YouTube channel, Physics Models. We also have an award-winning website, physicsmodels.in. In this video, I'm going to explain a physics concept to make things easy for you to understand and remember. I will now move out of the screen to allow you to view the content. See you later. This video is about the mass continuity equation in fluid mechanics. It has all to do with area and velocity of fluid flow. So I have created an animation where a few particles of fluid enter from the left part of a glass tube at the larger diameter and as they enter the narrow throat you will see them speeding up and after going through that they once again slow down as they get to the larger diameter. The continuity equation refers to something which is continuous and here it talks about the mass flow being continuous. There are two words mass and flow. So irrespective of whether a tube is straight or bent like shown in the figure, bent into an S shape, as long as that liquid cannot be compressed, as long as there is no accumulation of mass somewhere inside the tube, the mass that is flowing in from the left hand side must be equal to the mass that's flowing out through the right hand side of the tube. That's all. The mass flow has to be continuous. So it's a conservation of mass equation. So we take sections on this tube at various points, section 1, 1, section 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4 and 5, 5 and if we measure the area at each of these cross sections you will get a circular area because the circular tube in the figure and let that be A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. If you measure the velocity at each of those sections it will be V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5 then the product A1, V1 the area to velocity will be constant throughout the length of the pipe. That's all about the continuity equation. Let's derive the equation. Mass flow rate. So there are three words mass, flow and rate. The moment you say rate the time comes into the picture. So that's Q is equal to mass flow M divided by time that's delta T. The mass M is equal to volume into density. Density is rho, volume is area of cross section into the length traveled by the liquid. So that's A into delta D. When you rearrange that, you get rho into A into delta D divided by delta T, the distance by time. The distance traveled by time is nothing but velocity, velocity of the liquid. So we get the mass flow rate as rho into A into V. Now, rho is constant because the liquid is incompressible. Therefore, AV is constant. That's how you get A1, V1, is equal to A2, V2, and so on. Coming back to our bent pipe, we saw that the area of cross-section at 4, 4 is higher. It's fatter. So, if we write A1, V1 is equal to A4, V4, since A4 is larger, therefore the velocity V4 at that cross-section will be lower. So the fluid will flow slower at that particular cross-section. Coming back to our glass pipe, we take three sections at 1, 2 and 3. At 2 is the narrow throat, so A2 is very small. Therefore the velocity through that section V2 will be high. The fluid will speed up through the section 2. AV being constant, the velocity of the fluid will adjust itself according to the area that it encounters. We now go through a solved problem with the continuity equation. We have a nozzle, I have shown only a part of it. The entrance to the nozzle has a circular cross section and you can see the red liquid molecules entering from the left hand side. The outlet of the nozzle does not have a circular cross section, it has a flattish, a squeezed a cross section and some liquid uh, will come out through that. The data of the inlet velocity is given, the area data is given and we have to find out what is the velocity of liquid 
to the outlet of the nozzle. We draw the sketch and draw the sections at point 1 and 2. The velocity at section 1 is given in the problem as 2 meters per second. The area at section 1 is pi r squared because it's a circular one. So that's 3.14 into 0 0.3 whole squared. You will get 0 0.2826. At the section 2, the area is already given in the problem as 0.1 meter squared. So plug it into the equation and you get the velocity v2 at section 2 as 5.2. 652 meters per second and that's logical because that is significantly higher than the inlet velocity because the area is smaller. I want to touch upon a point of the difference between the continuity equation and the Bernoulli's equation. There can be some confusion. The continuity equation is all about mass flow continuity. It's a mass flow conservation. It relates area with velocity. The Bernoulli's equation is an energy conservation equation. It relates pressure with velocity and height of the tube. So both are different and both can be used together in a solved problem provided the liquid is incompressible and is flowing in a steady state that is in a laminar style. It's worth looking at the Bernoulli's equation for a few seconds, although we are not explaining that in detail in this video. We have three terms in that equation. The pressure, which is an energy per unit volume, the potential energy per unit volume, and the kinetic energy per unit volume. Potential energy for an object, we know it as MGH. Here we have rho GH or rho GZ. That's because it's calculated per unit volume. Kinetic energy for an object, we know it as half mv squared. Here we have half rho v squared. Again, that's because it's calculated per unit volume. So the sum total of this energy is constant throughout the length of the pipe where the liquid is flowing. And this runs parallel to the continuity equation. A few words about laminar and turbulent flow. Turbulent flow is chaotic as shown in the sketch, there are a lot of eddies in it. Laminar flow will be smooth and steady without any disturbance. So in the garden below, you can see laminar fountains, very smooth. The water coming out on the right hand side through that blue pipe is turbulent flow. If you turn on a tap, initially at low speed, it's laminar flow. Increase the speed and it becomes very turbulent. Talking of energy conservation, Bernoulli's equation assumed that there are no losses due to friction. In reality, there will be frictional losses leading to viscous losses. Poiseuille's law captured this reality and said that when a liquid flows through a length L, that pipe will offer a resistance and there will be a pressure loss from beginning to the end. If we think of electricity and Ohm's law, I is equal to V by R, where I is the current flow, V is the voltage drop and R is the resistance. Very similarly here we have instead of current we have the flow rate as Q, instead of voltage drop we have P1 minus P2 and resistance remains R. So Q is equal to P1 minus P2 by R and Poiseuille's law defined the resistance for a tube of circular cross-section. I hope this video was uh, useful for you. Uh, thanks for your time. Please uh, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends and log in to the website. Have a great day.